Welcome everybody to the online partial extraction therapy program. I'm very happy to be bringing you this program in conjunction with Dr. Jorge Campos, who has written an excellent ebook as well on this topic. Chapter one begins with what we consider a paradigm shift in implant dentistry. So first we need to look at the definitions. Partial extraction therapy encompasses three things, the socket shield technique, root submergence technique, and the pontic shield technique. Socket shield technique is what we employ in placement of our implants. The root submergence technique involves burying the roots only. The pontic shield technique is a variation of the socket shield technique in which implants are not being placed. The technique dates back to 2010 under the Herzler group and as well as the Mitzius group in 2006. We know that total tooth extraction leads to some level of bone loss, especially when we consider the bundle bone and the buccal cortical plate. And this is shown from the works of Arujo and Linde. Rather than removing the entire tooth, a buccal fragment of the tooth is left in place. And this is done on purpose. The implant is placed in the paddle or lingual aspect of this fragment, what we call the shield. This implant can be in contact or not in contact with the retained root, but it's very important that you don't have any root mobility. This technique dates back to 2010 it's become wider and wider in use with spectacular results from clinicians throughout the world. In the short term, we know that when we extract the tooth, the PDL comes with it. This ligament is composed of fibers and blood vessels that feed into the dense bone, forming the buccal cortical plate. The bone is naturally nourished through this vascularization provided by the bone marrow and the periosteum. So it's become very clear that the blood supply to the periodontium is more important than the blood supply that's provided by the periosteum. In the medium term, over the years, researchers have shown that there's a number of failures in case that initially seem to be quite successful. We see, especially on CBCT scans, that an implant can be halfway out of the bone and functioning without issue. And is this the fault of the oral surgeon that placed the implant incorrectly or was the implants placed correctly and something has changed over time? And there's a number of consequences that come with this. You can get gingival retraction, you can get buccal defects, you can get shine through or transparent color of the implant showing through the tissue. It can also lead to a cascade of peri-implantitis complications. So some complications like I'm showing here include tissue retraction. You can get the shine through of the titanium showing through the tissue. You can get a depression or buccal collapse, eventual peri-implantitis. Why is this technique used and why is it so useful? We can see that these implants do not have any bone present in the buccal area. It looks like these implants were placed incorrectly. What really happened here? These were immediate implants. They were placed in the same day that the teeth were replaced. So the extraction here uh, occurred and the buccal plate was very thin. And over time, from function and musc muscular tension, we ended up with bone resorption and having a very thin or non-existent buccal plate. By maintaining the periodontium, the vascularity of the keratinized gingiva is also maintained. When we extract a root, we lose not only the alveolar bone, but also that vascularity of the periodontium providing nourishment to the gingival margin. What do we normally do? Normally in type 1 sockets, which are sockets with intact buccal and lingual plates, implants are placed and we are filling the gap with a biomaterial of choice. Typically, we're also adding a connective tissue graft from the tuberosity or palate to thicken the, the tissue or also change the biotype from thin to thick. There's a learning curve to this, including extra morbidity factors that come into play. So what does the literature say? We know from the works of Chapuis, we know from the works of Benick, that the thin buccal plate in most of these cases is less than one millimeter in thickness. And there's an interesting study here by Benick where they took a radiopaque resin and took a CBCT of the area to show how thin the buccal plates were in place. And it showed that 65% of the implants had a buccal cortical plate. The remaining 35% had no buccal cortical plate at all, as shown in this image. So what to do? 
Preservation of the buckle plate depends on its thickness. The analysis of socket wall dimensions in the upper maxilla showed that most cases, actually 87% of cases, had a socket thickness of one millimeter or less. So this is a big problem, especially in the aesthetic zone. So this is where the socket shield technique comes into play, and we're going to discuss that next in chapter two.